Hey everyone, a Paladin here with another Major Philosophies video. Today we'll be taking a look at Inferno, personally my favorite map and one of the most popular maps in the map pool as of right now, behind probably Mirage and Dust2. But I want to basically go over some key positions on the CT side, talk about some rounds, uh, how the pros like to play, and then on the T side of things, show some really key concepts that you should probably apply in your matchmaking games, face it, ESCA, whatnot. So let's jump into some some key positions here. So personally, uh, the first big position that I want to talk about is the B anchor position. And it's something that's slept on for quite a while because you don't necessarily see, necessarily see star players play in, in this position. It's usually the players that are actually more supportive and it takes a certain type of skill set to play. But regardless, it's a very, very difficult position to play and a very important position to play on. So the key, the key reason as to why it is as important as it is is because let's say so so the, the common tendency is to play 2b 3a as you guys know but the important part about a b anchor is that let's say you want to play a 4-1 setup having four players on the a bomb site then you need to have a b anchor that is stationary in the b bomb site that is able to delay in case of any car aggression and for that reason, the, the supportive element of the team usually plays here because they utilize a lot of utility and a lot of stalling techniques to make sure that the T's don't just flood the bomb site. And so it's a lot, of, uh, you have to have a very good understanding of when to time your utility and when to use your flashes to delay, play in very different positions and switch up your positioning in, in such a way that you're not easily found out by the T's. And if you can combine all of that, you can really... Uh, support and build up your star players and as soon as they come in on the retake or you're able to get one kill or two kill before dying it makes their job that much easier and you're able to convert those ct rounds very well so b, b anchoring position is not something that's talked about as much but is still a very important position nonetheless the second position i want to talk about is the dynamic awp it's not necessarily a set position that i've i uh, that, I, that i've actually laid out and uh, I think the the best example that I can use is probably simple in this regard. He's a player that loves to take angles and and take fights with them, and then switch up and go to a completely different part of the map and then take another fight. So what do I mean by that? So sometimes he might be starting off the round uh, in apps and goes for an aggressive peek down here and takes a fight. And let's say he doesn't win the fight or he does win the fight, he'll change up his fight, go all the way through back, come all the way back to mid. Fight here, take a peek down here, or maybe go down alt, and then he'll fly all the way back to banana and, and start it all over again. But the important thing about it is that he has a plan as to which angles he's going to peek into systematically and basically catch the T's off guard and get rack up as many kills as possible. So it's not something that is for everybody. It's a very difficult position, again. Um, but it is the one that you can probably create the most impact off of and, and could probably carry the most games off of. If you're able to pick the, the pick the myriad of angles that are there for an opera on the CT side of Inferno, you could easily become a, a carry in your games and fly up the ranks. If if, if your aim is on point and your decision making and and planning before the round even begins is also on point. So another uh, big big spot that I, I need to talk about here is pit slash lane. Now this this position is an is very similar to the B anchor position, but they tend to give it to more of those second star player uh, uh, on like professional teams. So think twists on phase, think uh, electronic on Navi. These are the players that love to play pit uh, because of how effective they are with using their utility very defensively. But it's all in a very individual sense. Rather than for playing for the team, you're playing for your individual uh, prowess and getting a couple kills before you go down. Uh, usually two or three, as opposed to the one or two that um, uh, B anchors tend tend to uh, f shirk towards. So key key reasoning uh, uh, when 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 playing as an A anchor or in the pit side pit side of things is you be be able to be easily molotov out of this position and very easily cleared. But the difference maker is your smoke and how you utilize it. Uh, other compared to other positions. Holding on to your smoke and knowing when to deploy it is very important. Because if you're able to deploy your smoke here and then get up on top of the bike, uh, you can actually find an angle in such a way that you can see over your own smoke, get some kills down into the top of apps, get some kills into the uh, bottom of, of lane, and really propel your team uh, with, with whoever's on the art side or on the actual A anchor side of things. So this, this 
part of the map is also super important. And I know, uh, I think you can uh, watch some Vu videos where he was talking about lane is probably the most uh, important position if you want to carry games. And I, I will say that there is some uh, agreement in that sense that you can get a lot of impact off of playing Porch. And then you could always fall back on an A and, and fight that way once the actual hit comes on. But I think the position of Pit is also super duper important for a CT if you want to uh, have a serious amount of impact. Now, now that I have these three key positions, we'll move over to some demo rounds that I can show some major philosophies about and try to apply these positions towards uh, enhancing your game. So I talked about it in our previous video where we where we were on Mirage and aggression is super important on that map as well. But here on on Inferno, I want to change that up that concept up a little bit because of how important Banana is uh, in in today's meta and the concept of re-aggression is is the focal point of aggression as a whole that I want to talk about on, on this map specifically. Basically, when you're able to re-aggress and take back control for, for a certain part of the map, it might suggest to the T's to maybe corral into a unknown piece of the map that, that essentially will always favor the CTs, right? So in this case, we're on a complete super duper light buy here for Gambit. Uh, against Furia here, and you only have the hero AWP of Shiro. So everything that you're doing is you're doing to uh, sorry set hit, set Shiro up and make sure that he can always uh, be involved in anywhere that Furia wants to take. So we'll start off the round very quickly. They try to take a little bit of, of boosting here for Shiro, and he doesn't seem to find anything. But you'll see they expend all of this utility uh, utility Furia to take all of car and take all of sandbags and by a time that they do that they've under so now gambit has understood that the utility has been used and they will re-aggress with this flashbang here to make sure that shiro can get a fight so shiro goes in Caserado has to take a an untimely fight because even though Caserado isn't blind in that situation he still has to re re-aggress and fight shiro head on but shiro's already on the angle gets the kill and this dissuades anything from furia uh, to re-aggress onto the B bomb side, right? Because they are now considering the only the only AWP, the only weapon in this situation is on the on the B site. So we will now go into the crossfire setup of of the CTs on the A side of things, and they'll think that that's probably an easier situation. But as I will probably show you in a couple uh, in another round uh, after this one, the power of crossfires on this map are absolutely immortal. And compared to other maps in the map pool, Inferno has the deadliest CT crossfires to date. And you and you'll see that. It works out wonderfully for them, uh, and and they they completely shut down Furia through through USPs, and then it's very impressive to see. So as soon as uh, all the utilities expended again, they get brackets control for free. But again, they don't know how many players there are on the A bomb side. They might they, it could be three players, it could be two players, one player. But regardless, they have to now go into a fight. Uh, where they have no idea where any of the players are. You see here, there's a player in graveyard, player in small pit, and they can work in tandem to get kill after kill. And now that there's 30 seconds left on the clock, they have no other choice. They can't really double back to B, and now they have to fight head on. Yuri has to uh, take an impossible fight here, fighting two different spots. And now look, every, every fight that Fury has to take is a two-on-one. And although Drop pulls back a considerable amount of kills and brings it down to a 1v1, Keep in mind, this is simply a simply a full eco for Gambit Esports, and with that, they were able to steal around completely away from reaggression and key amounts of crossfires. So let's jump into the next round, and I'll really show you and hit home as to how important CT crossfires are on this map. So I wanted to talk about the power of crossfires, particularly using the 2D replay feature from the Leadify Pro accounts that I think you guys should definitely utilize. But when when looking at the map from top down, it's probably a little bit easier to see the geometry of it all and, and see that it's just it, it's just basic uh, fundamental Counter-Strike to use, utilize crossfires in every situation. And even under the most uh, extreme situations, you're still able to, to pull a rabbit out of the hat purely off of the power of these, these CT crossfires. I'll jump into the round. Uh, I'll, I'll just do a quick uh, double time here just to make sure that we can get through the round. But as soon as uh, the round starts, we have uh, Gambit trying to take as much banana control as possible and really shirking back in apartments. And and they'll definitely get banana control here for sure. They, they'll actually uh, get it pretty much unscathed. 
In fact, they get brackets as well with the pick. So they get basically all the map control uh, that Inferno has to offer as a T. And basically, it looks like the round is, is pretty much done and dusted because of how much space that Hobbit's created and how much uh, uh, space Inters has gotten on brackets as well. But the key, key thing to note here is that when they do double back, you now have a crossfire between Yuri and Vinny on the bomb site. Yuri is going to be our pit player. Vinny is going to be our actual A site player. And watch how this, this, this simple crossfire is able to defend against a 2v4. So, Hobbit and Shiro go through the app side of things. Axel enter, enters down into the, the lane position. And as soon as uh, Yuri gets a kill, uh, Vinny also strikes at the same time. And they try to molly off Yuri. And as I was saying before, uh, the pit player has to know when to utilize his smoke at the right time. And Yuri uses it perfectly there to stay alive, as well as get a kill. As soon as this happens, Vinny won't be able to get any more. But again, Yuri's still able to look over the bike smoke and still take another kill off of Inters. And now Shiro is forced, in, now there's only four seconds left, right? So Shiro has to stick the bomb. He sticks the bomb. Now that he's into the post plan, Yuri can strike once again, especially when he knows that drop is nearby. And for that reason, that one crossfire is just so powerful uh, in, in Inferno. And we can see that in Inferno, in, on, on the B side of things as well, when you have a player on boosted CT and you have a player new box, that is a really powerful one. Uh, you can have Church and First Orange, those are really powerful. So there's all kinds of really, really powerful CT crosshairs that I think that any of you guys can utilize if you can just have some good communication with your teammates. So obviously on the T side of things, there are a lot of great pieces of utility that you can learn. You can watch any guide and I, I'm, that's not what I'm really here for. There are plenty of guides that you can watch, especially on this channel as well, that you, that you can look up. But obviously Coffins, CT, Arch, Lane, Moto, all very important smokes to learn and uh, will be very pivotal in just basic MM uh, face it pugs and whatnot to, to utilize. But beyond that, I want to tell you about some of the key pieces of the map that you want to consider when playing. And when you, when you are trying to make risky decisions, basically understand that you, you can be willing to, to sacrifice a body here or there to take these parts of the map because they're just that important. So the first one is car. Having any presence here on the B side of things, even if you just take it and you don't do anything with it, don't go back to B, you can always make sure that one of the B anchors has to stay on the B bomb site because you're showing presence uh, here on car. So getting this position unscathed is super important as always. Uh, and, and, and we've known that since the map's inception. But boiler, boiler and apartments have also been super important. It's very similar to how B banana works. On the A side of things, having A apartments and boiler and uh, balcony as well, just the entrance to it, basically feigns more presence uh, on brackets and make sure that anytime a CT wants to re-aggress into, into brackets, they're going to have to use utility and they're going to have to flush you out with a crossfire or two. And then finally, uh, the, the last one that, depending on the situation, is important, can sometimes even be CT spawn, right? And once the uh, CTs have actually fanned out, let's say you get a kill on Arch and you have all the CT position, you can double back in a library, uh, wrap onto a site, or you can double back to CT and do a B, B uh, split, right? So those those uh, opportunities that come and arise when you when you take CT is also super important. So that's a super pivotal piece of the map, in my opinion, as well, compared to something like Arch, which, I mean, Arch leads into CT, and I think that position is that much more important. So I'll jump into just one more round. Let's wrap this up really quickly as to uh, some key philosophies that you should be taking into the T side of things on Inferno. This, this round, I think, encapsulates the concept of T-side Inferno pretty well that you can use in matchmaking where Vitality is a pretty scrappy team. And when you tend to play matchmaking and you tend to play high-level uh, pugs, CTs tend to be a lot more passive and try to play crossfires and let the Ts come into them and, and win rounds that way. VP is probably the highest uh, highest level of a team that, that follows that same protocol where they play very, very passive. And they have one aggressive uh player with yekendar who likes to uh, backstab quite often and, and, and pretty frequently all things considered so regardless of that i want to highlight how important t-side utility is and when if you use that effectively and get onto the bomb site regardless uh of how many ma men you lose you can still play the after plan in such a way that you can win any situation based off of good communication so We'll have the main POV on Masuta here because he is taking most of the map control alongside Kyojin. 
They take apartments, they they rattle Jame down to 57, and they basically get Boiler for free, right? So at this point, all that they want is they want brackets, and so Masuta throws his smoke, they throw another smoke on the lane side of things, so they can just walk up brackets all together. This is breaking the rhythm that Virtus Pro might set. They can't set the tone on brackets. Now Vitality is taking that on their own, and that is something that is super important when you're playing these games that you can you can really try to shut down all these key positions with just a couple of smokes and some well-placed flashes and once you do that the world is your oyster if you have brackets you can go arch you can go lane you can wrap onto the a bomb side you can go ct you can go to b you can re-aggress back on a banana like there are so many different options when you get brackets like this so once this smoke uh, comes down Misuta decides to double back over arch and they decide to do an a split here so the smokes cover uh, cordon off any of the players that are coming in through CT, forces only the fights to be coming in from the two players on the actual late bomb site, and anything that comes through the smoke is luck at that point. And you can probably chalk that up to something that can be cleaned up in rounds uh, beyond that, right? So although one player does die to the CT player library, uh, Jame is the last man on in pit, and then they have a player in small as well. Uh, is very clean on these uh, kills here, but again, they didn't really discount for, uh, uh, sorry, account for Yekindar. And now we're left in this 2v3 situation that seems insurmountable. You have 10 seconds on the clock, barely any utility on his smoke. But look at this, Zaiwu and Shox have been doing this since uh, Zaiwu came onto this team. The, the communication is everything. Uh, on, on after plants as a T, T player on Inferno. And with their communication, we can see what it's like to play uh, with such synergy and how you can just take over any situation uh, on this map. So as soon as the bomb goes down, Shox takes down Yekindar. And now we're left in this 2v2 situation. They have all the information, right? They, they, they knew Yekindar was porch and now they know there's a player in library. And now you finally know where the player is at hay bales. And it's all just perfectly communicated as to which player is watching which angle you once you they immediately kill buster zaiwu is tucked in to make sure that shocks takes contact on the library player and then zaiwu swings out to follow right so this perfect synergy makes everything work swimmingly they know that they know that kicker is there and kicker says i don't even want to take the fight here i'm just going to back out the round is over and this is all off of the beauty beauty of French communication on Vitality and how regardless of how many bodies that they lost, they use utility very smartly and they play the after plan to perfection. All in all, Inferno heavily relies on communication and very good positioning on the map. And if you can master those two, a lot of these philosophy that I've discussed come naturally and, and can be very, very good for you in your matchmaking games. Trying to make sure that you have a duo partner can also be very good. Uh, uh, players on both sides to really gather as much information as possible and, and do with do with that what you may. But all in all, that those are the very key key takeaways that I want you guys to take, specifically on Inferno. So that's all for me in this video. Uh, continue to watch this series. Continue to subscribe to Leadify. Subscribe to my channel, Paladins Alliance, where I do a lot more pro CSGO demo analysis, uh, pro team chemistry balances and whatnot. So uh, I'll have my link down in the description below. And of uh, after all that's being said, uh, I will see you guys in the next video and, and the next map. Peace.